that we have returned to war, are witnessing the abuse by one of the powerful of its neighbour, with a flagrant violation of the principles of the United Nations. A great sense of darkness has fallen across the world at what is the unfolding tragedy in Ukraine. The hearts of the Irish people go out to all of those who are suffering from this completely unacceptable, immoral and unjustified violence. Our television screens carry images of all those mothers and babies crossing borders in order to flee the mayhem which is being inflicted upon them by the military forces of an invading, powerful neighbour, which is operating with total disregard for the principles of international law. And we think of those brave Ukrainian people struggling to defend their homes and country. This violence must stop. Its continuance has catastrophic consequences, yes, most immediately for Ukraine, but for the entire world. Troops must be withdrawn by Russia. The rise of militarism must end. Full humanitarian access, of course, must be given to all civilians in need. Every glimmer of hope through diplomacy must be seized. Humanity that had achieved one of its most significant acts of cooperation with the international agreements on climate change, the Sustainable Development Goals, now as we hear reports of the perilous level to which the planet has come, in some aspects near irreversible, as millions are displaced by desertification, we must not allow ourselves to be mired in militarism again while our planet burns and millions are dying of hunger. I call on all those inflicting this violence to reflect on that great principle that is lodged in the words of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and its affirmation that recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. The price paid for what are blatant abuses of human rights principles and international law will fall on citizens, on whom all of the consequences will endure in global isolation. These times, these events, however challenging, are times for diplomacy, for multilateralism and for our international institutions. At times like these, it is essential that the peoples of the world come together and demand the peace that is in the Charter of the United Nations, that was and is not only an alternative to war, but it is where our best hopes for humanity lie. We must respond, all of us, to the tiny glimmers of hope through dialogue, which we have seen, to bring this dreadful nightmare to an end and restore our shared task of peace-building, tackling global hunger, the needs of nutrition, poverty and peace.